Okay, today I'm going to show you how to make a simple three-channel delta wing foam airplane. If this is your first build, this should be pretty easy. If you built before, then this should still be a pretty good uh, build for you. Here I'm just taking an eighth inch foam board, peel the paper off of it, um, lay it out with a pen. I'm just using a straight edge. You can pause the video, you can start getting the measurements I'm getting. They don't have to be real precise as long as it's symmetrical and around about the same shape. You should be about the same ballpark as I was. Um, it's not a big plane, but it's still a lot of fun, pretty fast, and very crash resistant. Just cutting it out with a razor blade. Now, I'm making it two halves. Uh, you'll see later on in the video, we're going to take these two halves and stick them together. This is what I call a, a little lamination method. Uh, put the supports in between it. Makes it look better. You don't see the supports and it makes it very very strong um, whatever reason when you take the two pieces of foam it makes it extremely durable and very rigid um, I'm taking a basswood here a uh, small piece I think it's like uh, like 3 8 by 8 inch or even smaller maybe uh, this is going to be the motor support it's very important that this is glued well I'm using polyurethane glue you can see here I'm using a brush I'm applying water to the wood it's very important that you do that I'm gluing it on the back side of the foam. Uh, one side is going to be flush to the edge, as you can see here. Uh, I'm securing it with tape, uh, masking tape. I'm using 3M tape, but really any masking tape works pretty well. Uh, at, here I'm using a carbon fiber rod. This is a pretty small carbon fiber rod. I believe it's like a, I believe it's like a millimeter and a half or 1.8 millimeter. It is not essential that you use carbon fiber. I like it. I have available. I got it from Hobby King. It's pretty inexpensive. You can use wood if you do not have access to carbon fiber. These are the motor mounts. As you can see, I'm just using the motor to make a template to drill the holes. I'm also adding some supports here. This is to make sure that the motor has four points of contact and four where you can insert four screws. I'm just gluing those little pieces of wood onto it, the foam, so that way when everything's set and done, the motor's going to have four points of contact. Um, here I am cutting out the, uh, the rear portion of the plane. This is to give clearance for the motor. Um, the ailerons are going to extend just a hair in front of the prop. You don't want to have it too much because when you start actuating control services, it'll produce too much drag and it'll slow the plane down. Um, here I'm getting ready to, uh, I'm fitting it up to glue the two halves together. This is very important as you see I'm here, I'm putting a lot of weight on it. This is to keep as the foam glue expands, the polyurethane glue expands, it's not going to deform the airframe. Here I'm cutting out the rear portion. As you can see, the uh, since that wooden frame extended back there, I'm gluing it so that way it all matches up. I'm going to be hot gluing it just because it's not too critical of an area. It's just going to be the control surfaces. So they're not going to be enduring a whole lot of stress. So hot glue is just fine here. I really reserve the uh, polyurethane glue since it does take about 20, 30 minutes for the dry for the most critical components. Um, these are going to be the uh, vertical stabilizers. Um, nothing fancy here. I am going to, um, as you can see, I'm making a corner so that way the uh, vertical stabilizers have more just to, that way they have something to brace it up against. It's kind of hard to see there, but you can slow it down and look a little bit. I'm just trimming them up, make it look a little more finished. Um, I'm using carbon fiber to help support it so that way if you crash upside down uh, they should be able to handle the impact a little bit better and just using hot glue again to secure it now same thing on the other side you can see there a little bit better you can see where I have a little bit of a ledge so that way the foam has a little bit more surface area to contact um, I'm using hot glue to secure the motor leads that way they don't get ripped out because if you ever try to if you ever break a winding off it's very difficult if not impossible to fix you pretty much trash your motor so I always try to secure motor leads so that way in the event of a crash or me yanking on it or something like that you can help preserve those motor leads the servo mountings are pretty simple just cut a hole out stick it in and hot glue around it if you ever need to replace the servo you can use a razor blade to cut the glue out 
Um, here I'm just making a slight indention of one of the layers of foam. That way it gives a place for the uh, receiver to match. This is a Fly Scout 3 channel receiver. Yes, it's supposedly made for cars and you know service vehicles, but it will work with a 6 channel. Uh, it will work with the uh, 9X Turnergy radios or, uh, or Fly Scout radios. Um, since it's not a big plane, you're not going to be flying it real far away because you're not going to be able to see it. So I haven't ever had a problem with receiving range. I'm doing the same thing with the ESC. I'm using a uh, Hobby King 12 amp receiver. It's very much overkill for this application, but it's still pretty lightweight and it does excellent. I'm using some, um, uh, I guess it's EPP foam. It's just some packaging foam. It's very soft. It's spongy, but it's really strong and it's pretty easy to work with. I'm making a uh, lid for it, uh, kind of like a, give it a little more dimension to it so it's not just a flat piece of foam flying around it. Making a little cockpit. I'm also using it as a battery holder. I'm using a razor blade to cut out the interior to give clearance for the components on the inside as well as making the part that holds the battery. This makes it good so if you do nosedive it pretty hard, that battery can be protected. You can use rubber bands, I'm seeing here, I actually eventually later on end up using um, uh, magnets to hold it on. That works out pretty well, that way you don't have that rubber bands to kind of give it a bad look. Here I'm just doing some minor touch-ups, I'm just uh, helping make it more aerodynamic by trimming off the edges and you can use sandpaper to sand it off. This is the aileron mounting, uh, well actually they're elevons. These tabs here, little fiberglass, you get them from Hobby King, like a pack of 10 for like 78 cents, and I cut them down in thirds, not because of cost, but because you don't want, they, they, they're pretty stiff, and those little servos have a trouble moving anything if it's too much, so I cut them down to, because it's really not necessary to have the full size strips on a plane this size. I'm just hot gluing them in there. I'm using a razor blade to cut the, to uh, cut clearance from them out. They work very well. I've never had any problems with these strips as long as you glue them in good. I'm using a small piece of carbon fiber, flat piece of carbon fiber to help reinforce it. Uh, those um, elevons, just hot gluing them in. If you don't have carbon fiber, a little piece of uh, balsa or basswood will work just fine. Here I'm just mounting the horns, uh, just poking a hole, gluing them in, nothing fancy. I'm using pliers to form a loop on the wire. Uh, I'm just using some small wire. You don't have to get too big. Uh, just make sure that it is sturdy enough to handle the the, the push. Usually pulls never an issue. It's usually the, the push that it has to be sturdy. Um, be able to hold rigid enough to push it down. Uh, just loop them in. If you do make them too long, you can make like a Z pattern in the wire to help take up the slack. That works out well. You can see that one has a little Z pattern. Uh, make sure you screw your servo horns in. It's no fun to lose your plane because you servo horns came off. Uh, that's pretty much it. That's done. Go out and have fun. The flying weight's about 115 grams, so it's pretty light, pretty small. But